true religion and true Christianity is encountering God, literally experiencing Him, <laughs> is the encounter of the third person of the triune God, the Holy Spirit of God. Everything in Christianity it has to do with the Holy Spirit, at least an experience down here. Jesus said, and, you know, it's better that I go away, I send you another comforter. At the very end of his life, by the way, the Spirit of God is mentioned all the way through the Bible, you know, way over a hundred times in the New Testament, etc. Cetera, et cetera. It's just the Holy Spirit itself is about a hundred times, 90 something times or whatever, but it goes on and on. Many different terms, different um, ways of expressing the Holy Spirit. But Jesus, at the end of his earthly life, right before he left, he really talked about the Holy Spirit. He said um, in three chapters, five times alone, the fifth one is this big time back to back thing. He's coming, he's coming, he's coming. And then he came, if you know the story of Acts 2. And uh, is really focused on the Holy Spirit. The interesting, about the Holy, interesting thing, there's so much interesting things about the Holy Spirit. But um, the Holy Spirit, uh, Jesus said in, in John 16, in, in these discussions, he said, he's not going to speak of himself, but he's only going to give what I tell him, what I tell him. And he's going to glorify me. So there's a sense of the Holy Spirit wanting you to focus on Jesus and the Father. It doesn't really talk about us praying to him. It's not wrong. He's God. But the, the Holy Spirit wants us to focus upward towards him. And then the more you focus upward towards him and, and towards Jesus and the Father, your mind on him, the Holy Spirit just comes. So he's, he's like validating that uh, who Jesus is and he glorifies him and all. There's so much here I'd like to share about. It's just, I'm kind of overwhelmed. And that's what the Holy Spirit wants to do is overwhelm us, you know. Um, and I, I, I'll, t I'll take one particular scripture that came to my mind. And I love this verse. I quote it a lot in reference to this type of uh, context. Um, Paul said, you know, and by the way, what made Paul, Paul? <laughs> Good night. Every one of them. Whom, what made Paul, Paul, Peter, Peter, Jesus, Jesus? Jesus, you know, in the flesh was a human being, but he had the spirit without measure. I mean, there's too many verses all over this. And he didn't do any miracles until the Spirit of God came out. He didn't preach until the Spirit of God. And, and the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1 through whatever, 3 or 4, that he's going to have the spirit of wisdom and of understanding of might and all that. It's talking about Jesus there. Everything in experience is, is Spirit of God. Is experience. Now, I, don't go after experiences in God. Don't look for and try and get experiences. That's not the right focus. You go after God who gives you the experiences. I'm going to say that again. Don't go after the experiences of God. Go after God and he'll give you experiences as he sovereignly pleases, as he sees fit. And if you're not having experiences and you walk by sheer faith, which is great, without faith it's impossible to please him. But then it goes on and says, and true faith leads you to diligently seeking him, like going after him. And so as you go after him, he, the Bible says, search me in, with all your heart and you'll find me. You know, and, and he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Promises after promises after promises about this. But notice what Paul says, and this is kind of one I want to emphasize this particular um, golden nugget from the Word of God. Paul said he came to Corinth. He says, um, my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit, you know, Spirit, 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 <laughs> and of power, that your faith, here's a point, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, just like words, enticing words and philosophy and things like that, but in the power of God. So he wants us to experience, God wants to, you to experience him, his power. And it is contained in the words many times, sometimes it isn't. It's just healings and deliverances and things like that. Or just the joy of God, His presence, His presence, the presence, the presence of God on earth is Holy Spirit. And what am I trying to say? <laughs> I just want to encourage you to go after Him passionately and uh, really seek the Lord. And then God's Spirit will come upon you and He'll fill you. And you'll have baptism after baptism of the Spirit of God and fillings after fillings of the Spirit of God. He wants to just really have you experience Him. 
and he'll do it however he pleases and he'll, the wind blows where it wants to and you can hear the sound thereof and can't can't tell where it comes or where it goes so as everyone is born of the spirit see even you're born again you're not born again except by the spirit of christ the spirit of god is is it and so it's interesting it's all the way through i'm i mean too many verses here's jesus said if you be an evil now to have give gifts good gifts unto your children how much more will your heavenly father give the holy spirit to them that ask him why didn't he say something else wisdom or power or justice or mercy or fruit of the spirit and all that fruit of the spirit <laughs> like it's everything is there it's all over it seriously everything in christianity is birthed in and maintained and um guided jesus said the holy spirit will guide you in all truth everything is holy spirit spirit of god i think of him a lot but mainly i focus on jesus and the father and then i experience the spirit and it's like I don't think I, sh you know, think the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. I think he's just going to back down. He's going to like, okay, I'm going to go hiding more. He's going to be present with you if you're a Christian. He's, he'll never leave you. You know, it says, he, it, Jesus said, I'll give you the Spirit that will abide in you forever. He'll be in you forever. Um, but because he wants you to focus on Jesus and the Father and pray to the Father in Jesus' name and it's by the power of the Holy Spirit. By the way, that's all, of, even in prayers, your whole prayer life is based on that. Um, which one do I pray first? There's Jude where it says, but ye beloved praying on your most holy face. I mean, um, praying in the Holy Spirit it says, pr uh, let's see, but ye beloved, um, oh my goodness, I know that verse. I've quoted it many times. But ye beloved um, praying, uh, let me get it really quickly. Uh, so, oops, one more page. I'm in Jude. It's that little chapter. It's a powerful book, Jude. Um, he says, what does it say? Uh, but ye beloved, building up yourselves. That's what I can think of. Building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Building up yourselves um, on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and then Ephesians uh, 6, he says, uh, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. And then Romans 8, 26, um, likewise, the Spirit helpeth our weaknesses, our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for, but the Spirit himself prays. You know, it's all that. It's everything is about that. Um, I'll give you a mouth of wisdom that your adversaries cannot gain, say, and resist. And Jesus said that the Holy Spirit will give you a mouth of wisdom. I mean, it's all the Holy Spirit giving you everything to say. It's all about him. The fullness of God is, he wants, he wants to fill you. Be, the Bible says, be being filled with the Spirit, Ephesians 5. Be being is continue walk. So it work. Um, so it's the Holy Spirit. It's really wonderful. So uh, now, what am I saying? I, I would like to suggest that God wants to have you really experience him and not just go by a dry faith where you're just, you know, saying things by rote or ritual or form or anything but you experience the ecstatic, wonderful, mysterious, um, mystical in a way, you know, power, the presence of God on earth in you, you know, the spirit of God and he leads you. And uh, it's wonderful, wonderful. So I, now I'll just say a few things in ending. I don't know if you got anything out of this. I'm getting, it, getting things out of this just by talking about it, it's so wonderful. Here's what I'll just uh, like to share how maybe you, what, where do you start? What do you go for? How do you get this experience and encounter with God regularly, continually? Um, and that, again, Paul had it, Peter, all of them. Um, Jesus, did, you know, he did everything by the Spirit of God, you know. Um, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to, and preach the gospel before and all that. So one, I, this is some suggestions, uh, suggestions, different ways of saying it. But pour yourself out, empty yourself so that he can fill you. If you're full of yourself, you're not going to have much of the Holy Spirit. And he's, if he's in you at all, he's buried inside under this proud, self-centered Christian that's not really, you know, they're all up in themselves instead of emptying yourself of yourself. So how do you do that? Just pray hard and pray and pour yourself out to God. He'll lead you. The Holy Spirit will guide you on what to say and how to say it and all that. Um, and then the other thing is pursue Jesus. Just pursue God. Like, I, I, what, what I put here for, I, I was trying to think of how to say it. Just run after him. Hunt God. You know, go after him. Pursue him passionately. Like, run 
like I'm going after you until you get him. I love the word until, and it's very scriptural. You pray until you get it, like the unjust, the widow with the unjust judge in Luke 18, and and then Hosea he says, seek the Lord until he, you know, or it, it says that also in Book of Isaiah. Anyway, pursue him, like go after hot pursuit, go into a passionate. Father, I pray that you would, I want you, Father, and I want to know you, and I want to walk with you, you know, stir up your, no one stirs himself to lay hold of God, Isaiah warned. You know, I want to stir myself, and just, I'm stirred just thinking about this, like crying out to God, and praying to him, and and seeking him, and wanting him, and loving him, and worshiping him, and everything, and the Spirit of God will be you know, all over there. You'll start experiencing all the time the Spirit of God. And then he can use you mightily in this earth so that you're filled with the Spirit of God when you come into contact with people and you're praying in the Spirit, changing the world around you through intercession, etc. And then the third one is um, when you don't sense him or you don't have the feelings or whatever, you know, being tested or whatever, have faith throughout. And even, you know, just faith throughout is very key. Like, I believe that I'm going to have the power of God. I believe that the Spirit of God is going to fill me. I believe you to fill me like you promised and all. And this is what I said. Have faith throughout. Faith in Him, the person, and the faith in His promises. It's all the promises of God, of answering prayers and, you know, and that seek me and you shall find me when you search for me with all of your heart. And just kind of pleading with you to encounter God. Maybe you're not even saved yet. You've never had an experience of Jesus. Sometimes it's just, it's, you know, sometimes you have to take him by faith. They say you've been seeking and just, okay, I trust you to save me right now. And then the experience comes later. That's what happened with my mom. So just go after God, pursue him, want him. I keep thinking in a sense, it's like a, man pursuing a woman, you know, hard to, playing hard to get. God's not playing hard to get, but he does want sincere people. He wants people who really want him. If you come towards him, he'll come towards you and you can encounter him. That's what I'm really asking you to consider and to seek after encounters with God. And remember a little tweak on that. Don't go after the encounter with God, go after God and he'll give you the encounter. Don't go after ex looking for experiences. I th it's like you need to go after him, pursuing him, and then you will experience the presence of the Holy Spirit of God. Amen.